What's going on my friends? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today we're going to talk about wire insulation. So why is it important to even know about insulation? Honestly, the insulation is kind of the most important part to know about, and a lot of apprentices don't realize that they're not taught that. But the conductor, or the piece of metal inside of every kind of wire that you're going to come across, across is generally the same no matter what. You're going to have a piece of copper, or you're going to have a whole bunch of stranded pieces of copper stuffed together, or you're going to have aluminum, or you're going to have copper clad aluminum. But either copper, aluminum, or copper clad aluminum, the conductors inside of the colored sheathing are all the same. So when you look through the code book and you're trying to figure out like, well, why does this one wire, why can this handle this and why can't it handle it? It's all talking about what the insulation around the wire can handle. So keep that in mind. Most things in code that have anything to do with conductors are talking about what that insulation is capable. Is it going to melt because it's not rated for a high temperature? Um, is it going to be damaged in some way? Um, so a lot of different kinds of insulations are, are built for very specific environments. Some of them are meant to be submerged in water. Some of them are not meant to be introduced to water at all. So it's really important because if the insulation around a conductor starts to degrade or starts to become damaged, that's when you can have wire short out and create a potentially dangerous situation. So let's look at an example of two, I guess, on the opposite sides of the spectrum, two instances where insulation is kind of important uh, and, and the extreme differences in the uses of these two. This video is sponsored by Ariat. If any of you are in the market for a new set of work boots, um, I've been using Ariat for a, a lot of years and typically I can get a set of boots that last like two to three years, kind of depending on the environment I'm working in, but they've got a whole bunch of different styles. They've got stuff for specifically for electrical work. So it's a lot more insulated against electrical shock. They've got static discharge, uh, rated boots, got a lot of stuff that's, you know, waterproof. I mean, they've got tons of different options. I personally like that they have a difference between steel toe, composite toe, and carbon toe. I don't like steel toes, so the, I typically will buy something that's a composite toe, but I recommend Ariat just because it's what I like. So if you're interested, go check out the link below, get you some new work boots. So first we're going to look at Romex or what we call NM cable. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different kinds, NMA, NMB, but non-metallic sheath cable. This is what we use in homes for the most part. Some businesses, if it's a wood structure or if it's a metal structure and you use special bushings, a whole bunch of places that you could use Romex. I just call it Romex. That's actually the brand, but that's what most people call it, Romex. Um, but type NM cable is not meant to be put into raceways. It's not meant to be wet. Uh, it's kind of one of the weaker of the conductors because the insulation is only rated for 60 degrees Celsius. So uh, if you introduce it to a really high heat environment or you start putting a whole bunch of amperage in it past what the insulation can handle, the insulation is going to start breaking down. So that's why we put it in homes and we don't really expose it to sunlight or uh, you know, bury it in the ground or anything like that because the insulation around the conductor can't handle that. But another situation where we've got uh, an, a conductor that's very similar is UF. So UF is another cable assembly. It looks just like Romex, but instead of the yellow or white or orange sheathing around it or black sheathing around it, Romex has a whole bunch of different, depending on the size and everything, but a whole bunch of different outer colors. Uh, of sheathing. But UF is standard, it's gray. So there's this UF is very, very durable. If you bend it, you're not going to break it. There's nothing moisture can penetrate into the insulation because the outer sheathing itself is actually melted on to the inner insulation of the conductors. So the inner insulation that's pr uh, protecting those conductors 
can't degrade because the elements from outside are not going to enter into it. So that insulation is completely protected. So that entire cable assembly is rated for a lot more, you know, crazy environments. You can directly bury it in the ground. You can hang it in trees, you let, you know, the UV rays, let the sun radiate down on it and it's going to be okay. So that insulation, that cable assembly is made for that. So you're going to go through a whole bunch of different things in the code book that talk about um, different cord types, different cable types, different conductors and fixture wires. There's a lot of different conductors, but just know what is really being talked about. The important part to know is what the insulation is and, and what's going on with it and making sure that if you're working in some kind of new environment and you know that, okay, we're, we're storing a whole bunch of really corrosive stuff in this one room this might affect the insulation. It might actually affect everything in the room, which is something you need to think about if you're working in a hazardous environment. Um, but if you're just, you know, like working in a house, you know, you have different types of insulation that you can use and get away with. Now, again, always say this, the code book is the minimums. The code book covers everybody's ass on the minimums that need to be installed. Um, you're more than welcome to go above and beyond, exp put far more expensive and stronger insulation in. You can, you know, instead of running 20 amp circuits, you can run 30, 40 amp circuits to all of your equipment that's rated at 20 amps. It doesn't really matter. It's okay. It's going to be very expensive for you to do that. But I always try to remember or to remind people that the code book is, is talking about the minimums and it is definitely okay for you to exceed the minimums. You just can't go below them because that's where the liability line is. An example of something that might happen to damage insulation or um, maybe perhaps melt the insulation and cause a problem. Uh, say that we had two conductors and we're running far too much current through them uh, for a really long time and they're in an extremely hot environment. They're in like Texas up on top of a roof right next to the roof and it's 120 degrees out. Over a very long time that situation could result in the insulation around the conductors starting to degrade and actually melt. And then you've got two wires that are energized right next to each other. The only reason they're not shorting out is because the insulation is intact but over enough time if that insulation starts to melt boom, all of a sudden you've got a situation where those conductors are actually going to touch each other because there is no more insulation. It's all melted off. We run into that a lot of times in, in uh, HID fixtures, high intensity discharge lighting, where there's a metal halide, high pressure sodium bulb that's like 700 degrees to the touch and the ballast gets really hot. It's in a huge metal case you know, out in the middle of the Texas sun, it's just an incredibly hot environment. So the insulation on the ballast wires, a lot of times just melts. Um, wire nuts melt if you don't use the right high temp wire nuts, which we run across all the time. But that's what happens. The, the insulation degrades over time. And then these wires all of a sudden touch each other and blow up and they short things out. Um, another thing that happens is say it's not two different uh, ungrounded conductors, like two hots that are touched that end up touching each other. But say it's like a hot and a piece of metal, like the actual metal enclosure that a light fixture is in. Well, if that hot over time gets way too hot and that, that insulation starts to degrade, that thing is going to touch the metal of the fixture once that insulation has gone. And if the fixture or the pole light or whatever you're working on, if that metal enclosure is not grounded properly, that entire metal enclosure will become energized. So it just takes some kid walking over and, you know, touching the pole and just like electrocuted. That's why it's really important to ground and bond things. We're going to talk about that in a much later video. Um, grounding and bonding is hugely important, probably the, one of the most important things right out of the gate to understand and to start wrapping your head around. But you can start to see why the insulation around a conductor is so incredibly important and why everything is rated for insulation. Everything's rated for temperatures, um, for environments, for, you know, what a conductor is going to go through, what kind of stress it's going to go through. So I hope that that kind of cleared things up. Uh, really think about insulation. Insulation is important, but also um, just understand that that all of the codes and standards that you're running across for these conductors, the, the D rating of uh, conductors, all of it has to do with making sure that the insulation around the conductors is cool. That's why we D rate, you know, you got a whole bundle of like 20 conductors in one pipe 
the likelihood of those conductors being exposed to excess heat because of all of them having current on them is high. So you have to derate the number of conductor, or you have to derate the amperage uh, of what each conductor is allowed to carry because they're when they're all bundled together like that, they can't carry the same amount of current without the insulation degrading. So a uh, really important thing to, to understand and to realize. Um, hope that helps. I uh, love you guys. Thank you so much for your attention, and I'll see you in the next one.